So it got to me. Yes. So okay, can we start or not? Yeah, for me, okay. Okay. So Hi. Hello. Uh, Aria Lidia. Uh, Aria João Marcos, Eric. So I would like to thank you for supporting us in this defense. Uh, we will divide the presentation in 15 minutes. João Marcos will talk about the the work. And after this, Aria will talk about the, his comments, and after Alan. So, uh, thank you, Eric, thank you, João Marcos, and uh, thank you, Alan and Aria, to support us. So, especially my advisor Ed, my co-advisor Ed, and the evaluators of this work, Alan Ed. Good. The title of this work is Lifetime Evaluation of Three-Phase Multifunctional PV Inverter with Reactive Power Compensation. We all know the growth insertion of the PV system into the grid last year. Okay. For example, the PV system capacity uh, grew from 8 to 400 gigawatts in last year, an increase of 50 times. This number shows how the PV solar technology has gained strength in the energy to market in last year. This figure here shows that the operation curve of the PV inverter does not exceed 30% of the total operation area. So, the other 7% can be used by the inverter to provide another service to the utility grid, aiming to improve the grid power quality at the same time that active power is injection. Here, we can see the PV system under study. Uh, our focus is to study the PV inverter, as we see here. A change in the firmware, firmware of a PV inverter can add new functionality in this component. So, we, uh, the multifunctional PV inverter appears as a solution and represents a, a change in the philosophy of the traditional PV inverter. To, <clears throat> to explore, uh, by implementing some features in this component to explore this unused 7% of the total operation R that we see in the previous slide. The multifunctional PV inverter can provide reactive power uh, and harmonic compensation to the utility grid. Our focus is the reactive power support. Some advantages of this, this functionality are to provide reactive power to the near loads Avoid the circulation of reactive current in transmission line, for example, and decreasing the power losses. The voltage regulation in steady state, uh, for, and consequently the power factor control, and the voltage regulation transient events, such as uh, over voltage and voltage stacks. We are now entering the problematic of this work. The reactive power compensation functionality can impact on the PV inverter reliability. Uh, it's known that the PV inverter is one of the weakest links in terms of reliability of the PV systems. This deduct figure shows the output current when the PV inverter injects reactive power, and this one shows the output current when the PV inverter does not inject the reactive power. An increase of 40% can be observed uh, between the, the amplitude of the two curves. This means that when the PV inverter injects reactive power, more apparent power are processed by the inverter, and the PV inverter components can be more terribly expressed. So the objective of this work is analyze how this new functionality can impact on the PV inverter reliability. Uh, understanding the physical failure of power models is very important. Uh, the power models are composed by IGBT and unparalleled IO. The, uh, <clears throat> there are two types of physical failure, the catastrophic failure and the wear out failure. The catastrophic failure are caused by a single event over stress, such as a short circuit. This type of failure is usually unpredictable, so, <clears throat> uh, 
and, and this, this type of failure will not be treated in this work. The wear out failure, however, are more predictable than the catastrophic failure since we know the operation conditions of the IGBTs. Okay. The wear out failure can occur in base plate and ship solder and usually in bond wire. <coughs> Our focus is a study on the bond wire lead to our failure. So, the objectives and contributions of this work are analytical modeling of twitching and conduction power losses. The reactive power compensation according to a real reactive power provider required by industry. The influence of thermal cycles on power device lifetime consumption. And finally, the Monte Carlo simulation to evaluate the lifetime with and without reactive power injection. The power losses analysis can help us to understand the impact when the PV inverter injects reactive power. We can see here the IGBT waveform current, and these zooms shows the uh, collector current and the uh, collector emitter voltage in, in, in order to calculate the switch and conduction power loss. The gray region, region here show, uh, is used to calculate the, the switch and power loss, and the blue ones is cons considered to calculate this, the, the conduction power loss. These equations here are modeling in this work. Here we can see the IGBT and diode conduction power loss and the IGBT and diode switching power loss. The conduction power loss depends on the modulation index, the power factor angle, the, the, zero, the zero sequence injected at the, the modulator input, the amplitude of current, and the switching power loss depends on uh, switching frequency, the DC voltage, the, the DC link voltage, and it's very important, does not depend on the power, power factor angle. Here we can see the, the, the results of the power uh, losses equations as we see in previous slide. Here the IGBT conduction power losses are shown, and the diode conduction power losses are shown too as a function. Uh, of a theta angle. This angle is the power factor angle and is directly related with the reactive power injection. From the angle between minus 90 degrees and 90 degrees, the, we are in the inverter region of the power PV applications. We are only interested in this region. Okay. Here, uh, the IGBT conduction power losses decreases as we injected more reactive current. In other words, uh, with the variation, the increase or decrease uh, on theta angle from zero degrees, the IGBT power losses also decreases. And this, this, this analysis is opposite to diode. Here, the switching power losses, uh, we can see that the switching power losses are constant for theta variations. This means that the switching power losses are not sensitive to the power factor angle. We can see here the power module chosen is from IFINO and has this part number. To ensure more realistic analysis, a real ambient temperature data and solar radiance data can be used, are used in this work from our board this data. And a reactive power profile is used too, uh, required by a, a real food industry. This database is called Mission Profile and was sampled every time, every second during a year. This figure here shows the step to translate the Mission Profile to thermal loading and then to estimate the lifetime consumption. Right here, a lookup table of power losses generated considering several conditions of active reactive power injection at the same time the junction temperature. Once the lookup table has been generated, we can enter into the lookup table with the condition, the mission profile condition, to estimate the device and power losses. These devices, these power losses are used in a thermal model to estimate the junction temperature. The junction temperature profile has, a, has behaved according to two time constants. The first one is the thermal cycling due to the, the climatic variations, called as long-term time constant. And the second one is the short-term time constant, as shown in the zone. We are interested in analyzing three parameters, extracting three parameters of this both time constant. And the heating time, 
the average junction temperature and the junction temperature fluctuation. With three parameters, we can enter into the bio lifetime model to estimate the number of cycles to failure. The long term time constant has not well defined thermal cycles, so we need to use a counting algorithm, a rain flow counting algorithm, to, to find these thermal cycles and then to estimate the lifetime consumption, uh, uh, the, the, the number of cycles to fail with the Bayer model. Uh, however, our, our short term time constant has well defined thermal cycle, so the heating time is fixed. The average, uh, average junction temperature is the output of the thermal model, and the last parameters, the junction temperature fluctuation, can be obtained with this equation proposed by KMA. They propose the power loss as a sum of rectangular forces, as shown here, then estimate the junction temperature, and finally obtain this equation for short term time constant. However, our heating time is not in the valid range of the Bayer model. So, a correction can be used to extend the range of the Bayer model to 0.1 seconds, from 0.1 seconds to 60 seconds. And then we can estimate the lifetime consumption with the mean rulers for both time constants, for long term time constant and short term time constant. The lifetime consumption is a static value and it is understood that all semiconductors will fail at the same time. We all know that the probability of this happening is very slow. So, a statistical analysis can, can uh, call it as Monte Carlo, uh, can, be, can be performed considering the variations in the, PBS, the, in the lifetime model parameters, for example. This figure shows the step to obtain the reliability of uh, the, the system level and component level reliability. First, we transform the, statis, the, sta, uh, the dynamic parameters into static ones with the same lifetime consumption. Then, we run the Monte Carlo simulation with 5% of variation in these parameters. And, and we calculate the lifetime consumption, the number of cycles to fail, and the, the device lifetime in years, and arrange it in a, wide, uh, in a normalized this heat term. After this, we can fit these results with a, a, a probability distribution, a variable distribution. And finally, given by this equation. And finally, we can uh, calculate the unreliability function for component and for the system, considering six IGBTs in the PV inverter. The studies are done for two cases the lifetime evaluation of the PV inverter without reactive power injection and with reactive power injection. This table shows the parameters. Uh, using this simulation, the PV inverter rated power 8 kVA, okay. the nominal grid frequency 60 Hz, Brazilian grid, and the switching frequency 12 kHz. Here, this surface shows the diode, IGBT, conduction switch, and total power losses. These points here shows the power losses when the inverter only injected rated active power. And these ones shows the power losses when the inverter injected rated active and reactive power. So, we can see in all cases that the, the power losses are higher for the case when the PV inverter injects reactive power compared to the case without reactive power injection. We can see in this slide the junction temperature, the average junction temperature uh, for IGBT, diode, and junction temperature fluctuation. The, the, mean, the mean junction temperature reaches 105 degrees, while for the diode, uh, reaches only 7 degrees. This, this analysis, this, this result shows that IGBT is more thermally expressed. So, uh, we can use, we, we use only the IGBTs in lifetime evaluation. This table shows the lifetime consumption of the PV inverter, the static, but the, 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 the static value of lifetime consumption uh, of the PV inverter without reactive power injection and with reactive power injection. The lifetime consumption when the PV inverter injects reactive power is 13.7%. 13 
This means that the IGBTs will consume 13.7% in a year. And without reactive power injection, uh, we can see that lifetime consumption is 4.6%, three times less. Here, we can see the probability distribution after the Monte Carlo simulation with 10,000 samples. Uh, we can see higher concentration of samples in the range of 5 to 10 lifetime years for reactive power compensation. And without reactive power compensation, the lifetime years is concentrated in 15 to 30 lifetime years. In this slide, we can see the unreliability function for system level, component level, without reactive power injection and with reactive power injection. The B10, as shown here, represents the time which 10% of the devices will statistically fail. So, the B10, the system level B10, without reactive power injection is 9.5 years, and with reactive power injection decreases to 3.2 years. Six, a, a reduction of 66% is observed in lifetime of the PV inverter. So, these results, the conclusion of these results are the Monte Carlo simulations reveals that the PV system lifetime decreases with reactive power injection. The failure time of the multifunctional PV inverter is almost three times lower, lower uh, than the traditional PV inverter. The results were obtained for PV plants in Denmark. In other countries or other indu industries, the PV inverter lifetime will differ from those present. And finally, with a conti continuous reactive power injection, a PV inverter hardware upgrade can be required to ensure a high, high reliable operation of the mode function of PV inverter. Thank you. Thank you for... Thank you.